What's up, freaks? Welcome to the Russian and the Freak Show. I am the Freak, and this is... The Russian. This is episode number four of the Russian and the Freak Show. And let me tell you, this week we're going to talk about our upcoming and regular Freak Family Suffer Fest that we do. This is suffering as a family for growth, for bonding, and preparing for the the fucked up shit that's going to come your way in life. And the free, the, the Russian and the Freak Show is all about how to maintain your equilibrium and function in this dysfunctional world as a freak family in business and life so you can transform the chaotic complexity that's out there into your own personal normalcy. And we're going to start off, this is the perfect time to do this. I'm just going to adjust one of these cameras a second. Or all of them. So this is the perfect time to do it. Tomorrow coming up, we have our 24-hour push-up challenge. We're literally going to be going 24 hours straight of push-ups. As many as we can get within 24 hours. And that's our version of this month for the month of March. The Freak Family Suffer Fest that we're doing for March. And it's a fundraiser for the Big Brothers Big Sisters Foundation here in Orange County, California. This is tomorrow, Saturday, March 6th from 12 noon all the way to Sunday, March 7th, 12 noon. Literally 24 hours straight seeing how many push-ups we can get. You can join right along with us and you can click the, the links in, the, in this video so that you can donate. We've already, already generated a couple thousand dollars worth of donations. We just put the link live just less than 24 hours ago. So we're looking to get, get a nice, strong donation for the Big Brothers Big Sisters here in Orange County. So why do we do this stuff? What are we doing? And why are we always doing this crazy stuff like this 24-hour push-up challenge? So this is all about what I like to call manufactured adversity. Because really both of us really had pretty fucked up childhood. And still to this day, the family that we have still tries to drag us down, still tries to drag our kids down, who's their grandchildren. And this goes on both both sides. Like her mother and my father, they I think they were they were conjoined twins that were separated at birth. They must have had some kind of surgery to separate them. And they ended up, one ended up in Russia and one ended up in Harlem where my father was born somehow. And they, they could be twins. So we had fucked up lives, fucked up childhoods, but that stuff is a gift. If you could learn to get, get your, wrap your mind around it and let your mind overpower the fucked up childhood you had, you guys can use that as a superpower going forward. And it's needed. That, that suffering, that adversity, that hardship. Every successful business person you hear comes from usually, they, they show up to this country with 13 cents in their pocket or some shit like that. Didn't come, didn't, wasn't just handed out to them. People want something for nothing in this world. And that's not the fucking way it works. That's not sustainable. And it's certainly not teachable to the, to the generations beyond. So we took this suffering from our own lives in childhood and learned how to flip the fucking switch on it in our own head and say, you know what? I'm going to use this for the evil rather than use this for evil. I'm going to use this for the power of good as a superpower. And we built several companies, made plenty of money, it impacted literally tens of thousands of lives, transforming minds and bodies and businesses all around the world for the last 20 years. And we realized that now we have our little freak kids. They don't have any of that suffering that we had when we were kids. They have, a, they have a great fucking life. They have an easy life. So we'd be doing a disservice to them by giving them an easy life. So we manufacture adversity for these little freak show kids, for Tyson and the Midge, and they earn it. They earn it. They, they do their own laundry. They, they do the, have their own chores around the house. They clean the cars, and they do that stuff with a smile on their face because that's easy shit. And that's why they're doing things like this 24-hour push-up challenge. They, it's called manufacturing adversity. Like when Tyson and I would travel to California when we used to live in New York. We'd get to the hotel. We'd be in a nice hotel. He'd be coming with me for like a week and we'd fly first class to get there. Cost a lot of money. But I say, listen, we, we get there. It's not just vacation. We're going to go to the store. You can get whatever you want to eat and drink. But guess what? We're walking to the grocery store, which is like over a mile or a mile and a half from the hotel. And we're walking back and whatever you want to get at the grocery store, you're carrying back yourself. So we load up a backpack and literally... He made one wrong move back and it dumped him backwards on his ass one time right in the, in the middle of an intersection. We almost got run over by a truck. But hey, that's manufactured adversity. You got to put make, put them in those situations to make them stronger, make them tougher. So they're not just little fucking Weasley bitches like the fucking men that are out there these days. 
and and the women that are out there all, all needy and all this other shit like you need to toughen the fuck up you need to stop being a little bitch yes so again this is the russian thank you for coming to the show and first of all, I want to say thank you for the donations that came already because without your help, that wouldn't happen. We're doing the push-ups, so please share the links. Please share the video because this is going to be huge tomorrow. But today we're talking about as a family, as a as a, a big united uh, um, uh, group, right? We're talking about challenges. So my question to you is, do you challenge your family? Please write in the comments. Do you challenge your family or you just challenge yourself? Or maybe you just challenge your children and then you're really separating and dividing your family into groups. We would like to know this. Or you're not challenging yourself at all and you're living a very basic life. So how we really started this whole idea of the challenges well really when we were looking into past year we were talking obviously when if you guys watched our previous episodes we give you an idea how to look at the previous year how to start the beginning of the year we were discussing a lot of things and right there the idea of the challenges happened and we start we, we decided that the, the, the past year was such a challenge overall we had to switch our business uh, pivot our business pivot a lot of things in our life in our kids life and everybody adjusted but we realized okay we're gonna do some physical challenges this year why not to step up the game in 2021 and do something more so we did the hikes we did the bike rides and Steve's gonna talk about this a little bit more but we really um, decided that we're gonna do something bigger and better and I'm gonna talk about this in just a second so back back to suffering, like really seriously, it no great success or victory or financial gain ever, or at least a lasting financial gain morally and ethically has ever happened without a significant level of of suffering and sacrifice and pain and fucking suffering. It's it's just the way it is. It's almost a prerequisite for success is to suffer and to have hardship and adversity. You need to go through that. In order to get through, it's called breaking down to break through. That's what we go through in the project. We break the men down physically to build them back up mentally and emotionally, spiritually, socially, and even freaking financially. So it's a break down to break through. That's what suffering is all about. And it's needed. People say suffering as if it's a bad word. Did you know that suffering also, other than meaning it could mean discomfort, but what's wrong with discomfort? People are, want the easy fucking way, afraid to go push a little bit every single workout, every day. We put ourselves through discomfort, hours of discomfort, volunteering for discomfort. And if I stop once in a while, it's to look up over here. I want to check the comments that are going on here because we do want to interact with you live. Challenge yourself every day. No children yet. Yes, train for it. So when they come, you're ready to be the role model. And America Rob. Yes, what's up, Maureen? Exactly what we're doing with the project. Exactly. Thank you for the support. So suffering People f fear suffering, people fear pain, people fear hardship, and it's needed. It's freaking needed. But you, you know that suffering also doesn't just, it doesn't mean pain. Suffering doesn't mean fucking pain. It doesn't mean losing. It doesn't mean giving up. Do you know that? Suffering means to endure pain, to endure disability, to endure death, to and, and, and really patiently and willingly endure it. That's what suffering is. It's not a bad fucking thing. Think about that. Patiently and willingly enduring pain, enduring even fucking close near to death or, or, or sacrifice. Or it could mean undergoing or being subjected to, to, to pain. Endure, the word endure. Suffering is enduring. And if you're not able to endure, you're just going to fucking crumble and you're going to live an average, mediocre life the rest of your life. And listen, if that's the way you want to want to live, then that's on you. But fuck that. Not in our peak freak world. It's not going to happen. And certainly not in this peak freak fucking family. As long as this fucked up heart is pumping blood through my veins, <laughs> we're not going to be, we're not, we're not going to be afraid of a little pain, a little fucking suffering. Trust me, to live in this fucking household with me, you got to be, you have to have some thick fucking skin. You got to be ready for some motherfucking pain and ready to endure some suffering because it's going to be a wild fucking ride. <laughs> but it's all for your own good. Just like the project. It's all for the wrong good. You should see the shit that we put these men through in the project. 
and they show up at graduation with a fucking smile on their face like they just achieved the, the biggest thing in the world. They just walked through a magical portal and they're completely transformed human fucking beings. That's what it's all about. It's suffering is undergoing or, or experiencing this transformation. Really, suffering is a transformation. It's once you get to that threshold of suffering, are you going to be a little bitch and run back to comfort? Or are you going to fucking run into the face of the devil while everyone's running away from the bullets? Are you going to run towards the gunfire while all the little bitches run away? That's what suffering is. That's what enduring is. That's what it's freaking all about. And let's talk about some of the suffering that we've already done as a family. And that's why we're continuing to step it up. And that's why we're doing this push-up challenge tomorrow. And we've done, uh, Tyson and I did a 120-mile bike ride. And let me tell you, if you know, I did a whole Steve Says episode on this. So I'm not going to go too deep into it. But I got asked by a, a bunch of project graduates if I wanted to do this bike ride down the coast of San Diego or down the coast of California, all the way from Orange County to San Diego. And they said it's about 130 miles. And it was about less than two months away. I'm like, yeah, I'm in. Me and Tyson are in. And they're like, okay, but is Tyson going to be able to do it? What kind of bikes do you have? I'm like, whatever. We got mountain bikes. They're like, do you have any training for this? What's the longest run? Have you ever done 100 miles before? I said, no, we've done 60 miles one time. It's the most we both have ever done. They're like, well, it's going to be a lot. Are you sure he's going to be a I said, we'll both, we're both, we'll both be there. So we took our gun oil that we clean our guns with. We sprayed our chains. And that's the extent of the training we did for this fucking thing. The thing is, I went to ask Tyson later in the day. I'm like, hey, what's up, little freak? You want to do this 120, 100, well, it was 130. We did 120. This 120 mile bike ride with me and a bunch of the guys in the project. He's like, yeah, let's do it. And I'm like, all right, so let's let's do a practice ride for like 30 miles just to get our legs conditioned for it. And this was on like a Thursday. And he's like, when we're going to do that the day before the ride? He thought it was on Thursday. He thought the 120 miles was on Saturday. He thought I wanted to do 30 miles on Friday. And he was willing to do that. 30 miles to warm up to do 120 on Saturday. He thought it was two days away. And he's like, fuck it, let's do it. Even though it was two months away. And we really didn't get any training in for it because we're not bikers. We just lifted weights and did some pull-ups and push-ups. That's how we trained for it. Just did our normal freak fucking workouts. If you're always on your A-game, you never have to get on your motherfucking A-game. Stay on your A-game all the time. So that was the bike ride. And the mids, the little mids, little, the little, at the time, she was six probably. Her longest bike ride was 33 miles. And shit, I never did a 33-mile bike ride until I was in my 40s. My fucking 40s. She did it at six years old on this little fucking bike. The tires are like the size of a matchbox car. With these like Barbie little flyer things, those little things in the handles that go off a little basket on the front with some little like pooch dog in it or some shit. Some little pink fucking puppy dog. This little tiny bike and she did 33 miles on it. it. Took a while, but she did it. Now she's ready to do 100 miles. So that took us to Iron Mountain. Supposed to be the hardest hike in Southern California where professional hikers don't attempt it. They fear it. It's just too hard. It's literally 6,000 feet. 6,000 feet, about seven and a half miles Climb straight, nonstop. It took us eight hours to get to the top. We did it with the entire freak family. We did it with some project graduates. We did it. Some of the project graduates brought their sons who never hiked a, a, anything in their life, and they came and fucking did this. And Midge did this with us. And let me tell you something. We went to the halfway point. It was eight miles. It was all snow up there at the top because it's fucking cold at the top. We're on our way down, and we're crossing paths. Like we didn't bring any of those sticks. I didn't use any of those skittle ski sticks or any of that shit. Or whatever, and spikes on your shoes and all this other fancy shit. We just put a backpack on and carried our shit and went hiking. Tyson had some worn out fucking tennis shoes on. Literally worn out tennis shoes on 6,000 feet climb where professional hikers tell you all this gear that you need to be putting on. Anyway, so we're coming down the descent, which is harder than the way up. It's brutal on the way up. 6,000 feet, your legs are frying, your heart's pumping out of your chest. On the way down, it's even harder because now you can't stay on your fucking feet, especially if you don't have those little 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 polar things, ski pole things, stripper pole things, whatever the fuck they're called, if you don't have them on your way down. So we're on our way down, and there's these professional, you know those little Weasley guys, you could tell they just hike for a living. Like it's That's just what they do. That's their thing. Just like the gym is our thing. Hiking is their thing. They got all the gear. They got like the aerodynamic goggles on that help them like brace the fucking breeze or whatever and all this other stuff. The water bottles attached to their butt cheeks and all this other things that they have on them and their poles and they have those little weird stride like this when they're going and they're all like freakish showish. They're going up on their way up while we're descending. This little shit midge, six years old, walking down like it's nothing after she just did eight miles up, looking at them giving them a thumbs up and nodding, saying, good job, buddy, keep going, you're almost there. They're looking at her like, what the fuck? What the fuck? 
And then this one of these little professional hiker guys, when we're on our way up, we're at this real hard point, the last like mile, it's just a brutal mile straight up, mile and a half, probably the last mile and a half. And there's some douchebag hiker. Cause you know, like there's always those douchebags that like, they think they own the fucking mountain, they own the world because they got some cool little spandex with their nut huggers on, right? And he starts telling us to stop moving because he wants to walk around us and says, don't move. And of course we keep moving. He's like, I said, don't move. What are you bringing them kids for here? They can't, they can't do this hike. They shouldn't be here. Bring them back down. This little fucking douchebag. Like the same as when we're riding, we're going on those bike rides. I love it because we have our little shitty mountain bikes, right? That we actually have to work and exercise for when we're biking. You know, not the bike that just rides for us and cruises for us. You might as well just ride your motherfucking motorcycle. If you're going to have all that weird shit on your bike that does all our aerodynamic bullshit. Might as well just ride a, a, a car while you're at it. Take a fucking plane. Take a jet while you're at it. <laughs> if you're not going to want to do the work. Anyway, so it's like when you're riding the bike, right? And you have... We're fairly fit individuals. And there'll be times we're fucking struggling on that bike. Because it's a regular bike. Shit gets hard. Your legs start burning. The bike's not doing the work for you. You're, you're actually using human muscle... And human like lungs and blood to, to do the work, not some fancy ass $8,000 bike. I got a dick special. Big old dicks special. Tyson's drive riding a Walmart special. Midge is riding a fucking Barbie doll special. So anyway, when you're riding the bikes, right? And you have those guys, they weigh like 250 pounds where their butt cheek like sags and swamps and covers over. Of course, they don't, it, their butt doesn't get sore because they got all that plumpness under their butt cheeks when they're sitting on that little seat, right? And it droops all down, hanging over. It looks like these two saddlebags hanging down. I like got saddlebags on a horse. And they come flying by you like 19, 20, 21 miles an hour behind you. And I'm struggling trying to go up those hills on our bike, right? Like a little hill. We're fucking burning. We're like breathing all heavy, all out of shape. And fucking turd boy comes flying, passing on your left, passing on your left. Like they, that's their favorite thing. They just love to scream it. You know how many times we get yelled at? On your left, on your left, watch on your left, out of the way, move over. Like nonstop, we get by obese men telling us that they're passing on their left. Anyway, that has nothing to do with this story. It just made me think of it. We get sidetracked very easily. Sorry, I have the attention span of a motherfucking doorknob, but we're going to keep rolling. So that's the hike. Then we do survival nights in the backyard where I set off the purge alarm in the house. We take this big, huge fucking like speaker, like a, a DJ speaker, and I just play the purge alarm and it goes off for 15 minutes exactly. You have the time that the purge alarm is going off to grab whatever you want, get into the backyard, and then we're spending the whole day and night out there. And those are awesome. We, like, and then these things I'm telling you about are literally the kids like top five days of their lives. The hike, the bike, the outdoor stuff. The drive across the country. Tyson and I drove across the country. This is the two of us. Fucking suffering. And at least when we all drove one way, the Russian and I could share the driving. When me and Tyson do it, he only could drive once in a while because he can't really see that well. I let him drive in like the open spots and he just, he peeks through the bottom part of the steering wheel like that. I tilt the mirror all the way down so you can kind of see where he's going when I need a little break. But I had to drive the majority of the time. That's a suffer fest. And we did it straight there, stayed there for a couple days and came right back. And when we were there, actually... We were moving a bunch of gym equipment. We were filling up an 18-wheeler with gym equipment, heavy weights, tens of thousands of pounds of weight. And the truck driver, who's actually a project graduate, who drove from Florida up to New York to help load the truck up, got there a day early. I had no one to help us. So me, a project graduate, and little shit nine-year-old Tyson, with our bare hands, with no trucks, no nothing, no little dollies, and the big 18-wheeler couldn't fit into the bay where it is, so he had to park out on the road. So all the equipment we had to bring out carry it over to the truck and he has no lift on the truck lift it up you know the top of an 18 wheel of the back is like up here lift all the stuff up there then walk it to the back of the truck pack it and store it and guess what we had fucking fun doing it fun suffering making suffering fun imagine you could live your life like that to do shit together have fun we talk the whole time we're connecting with the project guy me and tyson are talking having fun screwing around telling stories having fun fucking suffering that was like six hours straight of moving gym equipment, just the three of us filling up an 18-wheeler. And then that dude who suffered himself drove this shit across the country and helped us unload it here in California. So now we have a full gym in our house here in California after we sold half of it. And that would be another suffering when we had to unload the whole thing. We got up all early. I think it was like 5 or 6 a.m. All of us got it, got out. Yeah, like early because he arrived early. And the whole 
day long was moving this whole entire equipment but this time it was all of us and all the gym floor was put and cleaned by the kids literally they've been spraying with me and we post videos about it they were scraping the floor put hosing it off and we had so much fun we were all soaking wet and just making fun but it was hard all day long just the floor alone was probably a couple thousand pounds like a thousand pounds one square square foot one by one eight thousand hard rubber one by one square foot had to be scrubbed and cleaned on both sides moved out and then put together we have now gym flooring in the garage gym flooring in the front in the in the front driveway and the entire backyard has gym flooring so not many places you could have gym flooring in your fucking driveway. We have an outdoor gym in the driveway, outdoor gym. So the suffering leads, that's what I'm talking about. Like we can now do these workouts, have an outdoor gym in the backyard, an outdoor gym in the driveway because of the suffering we were willing to endure to make it happen. To me and Tyson to drive across country, to load up a truck, then to drive back across country, unload the truck, clean it piece by piece. But now that's to live life on our own terms. We have a fucking like three gyms in our house, literally three separate gyms in the house. Like can't fucking beat it. And that's, because of suffering. So those are some of the things we completed. We're going to talk about some of the upcoming things. This Tyson and I just actually planned it just, just recently. Actually, another thing, it's not really suffering, but just doing hard shit, right? Doing hard shit together. Tyson came with us to Vegas. I had a project meet up in Vegas just this week. It was four days in Vegas where we did some hikes. We did some, we went to shoot machine guns. If you know anything about guns, a Barrett, a 50 caliber, caliber Barrett sniper rifle shoots a 50 caliber bullet. I have a 50 cal here. I had one here somewhere. Huge bullet like this big. And the rifle itself is a couple feet taller than Tyson. He's sitting there holding it in a picture. I never even shot a 50 caliber sniper rifle. I shot an auto 50 cal in, in the Marine Corps, but never a sniper rifle. So they asked if we, they asked Tyson, we get there. I asked if he could shoot. They're like, ah, uh, he's this little, this is a little bald midget. I told them to tell him that he was Gary Coleman's twin brother and they'll let him do it, but they didn't believe me. I guess because he was white. So they didn't believe he was Gary Coleman's brother. So like, how old are you? He's like nine. They're like, have you ever shot any guns before? What have you shot? He's like, yeah, a, yeah, a couple. They're like, what guns? He's like, oh, I don't know, uh, a 22, a nine, a 45, 20 gauge, 12 gauge, five, five, six, seven, six, two. He just starts rambling off all the different guns that he shot. They're like, okay. They're like, so what do you want to, and they're talking to him like thinking he's they're talking to like a little kid. Like, so what do you want to shoot today, sweetie? He's like, ah, uh, 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 the 50 cal. He points. It's, it's on the wall in Machine Guns Vegas. Literally, it's like McDonald's of fucking guns. They have all the guns on the wall, like 100 different guns with a number next to it. You walk in and literally say, uh, I'll take a number 17, a 36, and you just go shoot all these crazy ass automatic machine guns, sniper rifles. So he's like, yeah, I want to shoot number 15. She's like, oh, that's funny. That's a 50 caliber sniper rifle. Huh? No, really? What do you want to shoot, sweetie? He's like, yeah, number 15. And that's a sniper rifle. They brought the shit out. And I never shot one either. So we both say, all right, we both want to shoot that one. And if it was me and I was going to shoot with my dad and it's like the most powerful gun available in the world, really, I'd be like, all right, dad, you go and do it. And then I'm going to see what it's like. I never even shot one before. I didn't know if, how it was going to be for me shooting it. I'm like, shit, that thing might knock me on my ass, break my fucking shoulder. So she pulls out the 50 caliber sniper rifle in the range and she's like, all right, who's up? Tyson hops up on this, there's like a little box thing. He hops up on there because he couldn't even see over the ledge to shoot. He hops in the box and lines himself up on this 50 caliber sniper rifle. Not even knowing anything, never, he never even saw one shot in person. Never know how powerful it is. He's seen it on the internet. But you'd think he would want to see me do it first. So I'm sitting there watching this nine-year-old to calm my nerves. So I'm watching him do it like, okay, phew, he handled it okay. Now maybe I can handle it. Like little fucking freak shows. That's what manufacturing university would do where... He didn't think, oh, let me see if my dad can handle it and then I'll decide. He fucking hopped right up to shoot. Like if you saw the size of the gun, the bullet is fucking taller than his sister and he's shooting that thing. Then he shot an automatic AK-47 before I did. I never shot an automatic AK before. He grabs it and he fucking lets that bitch rip. He didn't, you could do little bursts, right? Brr, brr. He did that for his first few, like an MP5 he shot, but he just let that shit rip brr, and, and controlled it pretty decent. Out of like 25 shots, almost all of them hit target on automatic anyway that's some of the stuff we completed we're going to talk about some other stuff coming up but this is why you do it so it's look, look at the mindset now these little freak shows are having like when shit goes sideways in their life like it's another day for them like they're not going to worry about it like, just like they hear me curse right oh my god you said the f word in front of your kids it's fucking sound coming out of my motherfucking mouth big deal right they know not to say it they're not going to say it but you know what that's doing 
It's hardening them up a little bit. At least is my philosophy. We'll see what happens. But it's hardening them up a little bit. So one day they'll be in high school and some kid's going to see them wearing their different color shoes or a little bald head or whatever the fuck they feel like doing at the time. Kids will be like, oh my God, you're so stupid. Look at your two different color shoes. You're so dumb. Tyson's going to be like, yeah, whatever. They're like, oh, you're so stupid. You're like, you look like a retard. Something. They're going to try to insult him. You're fucking, you look fucking stupid. He's going to be like, ooh, you call me fucking stupid. It's going to be, happen. it's going to be impenetrable to his fucking, his armor because he's going to be hardened up from it. That's not going to affect him and go home and cry and let it break him down. Because he's going to be, he's going to be toughened up from it. This is what we're talking about. These things like just showing me that he stepped up to shoot this gun before I did. I was going to ask the fucking lady first. I was like, hey, could you shoot around for us first? We can kind of see what it's like. I was thinking to ask this girl that. <laughs> I was like, fuck. I want to see if this girl can handle it. If she can handle it, maybe I'll try it. And Tyson's like, fuck it. I'm up. I'm up. Step aside, people. Fucking hopped in there. She's like, all right, get the crosshairs in. Once you get it in, shoot. Whenever you're ready. She's like, whenever you feel me tap your shoulder, it means you're clear to fire. She taps the motherfucker's like, bam! Fucking shot it right away. No hesitation. And hit that shit dead on. But, it was, I mean, it's a sniper rifle. You're going to hit it. It was pretty close range. But, anyway. You All get, right. You get the can point. Shove, then we'll, then, can talk. Can you scroll your... Go. You could, you could yeah, do your just thing. check it out because I see you guys been making a comments and this is awesome. We are on different social media. So, I know that so many pop here still make comments about the challenges that you're doing in your family or are you challenging yourself or just the kids. And what do you think about what we've been talking about so far? Because let me tell you why we really started doing it. Why we continue doing it. Because these hard things that we already have done and came across shows how much we humans are capable of doing. And constantly adults cutting themselves short. And what we've realized is that our fears, ours, adult fears, stopping the kids a lot of times. So look like Steve gave you an idea. He didn't go first. It, it, he, he had faults, but Tyson just ran and did it. And that's how we want to live our life. That's how we want to teach our kids to do it. Sometimes it's hard, but we just got to do it. So uh, that's number one that we test ourselves. It actually but happened on the highway too. It happened on the highway when we were doing the, the 120 mile bike ride. There's a portion that if you can't, you, if you don't have a permit to go through the Marine Corps base, you have to go on the I-5, which is like the craziest, fastest highway around here in California. For nine miles, you ride on the shoulder of a full-size, like, 10-lane highway with huge trucks zipping by right next to you, and you can ride on it. And, it, and I'm double-checking, trying to convince Tyson that we're, I'm like, I don't know about that. It doesn't look too safe. And we called our guys that set up the route. They're like, no, you're clear to go on that part of the highway. That's the only way to go. I'm like, Tyson, look, I found this thing on Google Maps. We can go around, and it'll take us, like, we'll just have to go an extra six miles out of the way. But look, look at those trucks going by. That's crazy. Let's take the extra way around. He's like, six extra miles? He's like, no, let's do the highway. I'm like, are you sure? He's like, yeah. I'm like, motherfucker. Little I was the one afraid. I was the one fucking shaking, like riding the highway, like, oh shit, we're going to die. We're going to die. He's just whizzing by, eating his fucking, he, he, he taped some, some organic popcorn or something to his bag with some scotch tape because he ran out of space. He's just eating some popcorn, driving on the fucking highway with 18 wheelers driving by at 100 miles an hour. But that's just another thing. That, yes, that's and that's just a side story, right? But it makes you think. Now, it makes our more united. So if you think that something is missing in your family, maybe simply is the, 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 the fact that you need to do some challenges as a whole united family. Because a lot of times I hear from people, we hear this all the time, the father goes this way, the mother goes this way. Instead of putting it all together, let's do that quality time, which I'm going to talk about, but it makes us more united. What about we go to the mall and you go to the shoe store, the makeup the, store? No. When, what about that? That That's, we're not talking about this right now, but... <laughs> the frequency to put these five sets. But helping one another throughout these challenges, we're finding out so much about each other. Uh, you know, like we were going down the hill and I think Steve did not know that I make so many noises just falling down. I even know myself. Each time I would fall down and I landed on my ass so many times going down the hill during that, but during that hike, I think I landed more than I walked. I don't know how I ended up sitting on it next day, but the noise that I was making, I didn't even know that I make noises like this. So you learn so much about one another. And it, and it's funny. Now, Ivanka would run up the hill and she would say, kill the hill, attack the hill. You know, all these different things that normally you would not be able to see and see the toughness, see the tough person.
person that you have, but also the weak one. You're going to face your own weaknesses and you're going to, you, and you need to work with them. Uh, like the other day when we were, you know, we were climbing these steep rocks and, and my heart is pounding and it, it's steep. It's on the edge. And I'm like, I'm a little afraid, but I need to work with this and, and try to overcome it. Not only for myself, but also for the family to teach the kids that it's okay to be, uh, have fear, but just to overcome it and go forward, right? It shows the strength that you have. So it's so many benefits from doing these challenges. Now also think about it, like the quality time that you have, because you're gonna create a challenge and you have to be with your family together. Now, obviously the bike was such a long time, but we've been together for hours and hours on that hike. The same with like the bike ride. So it's like that quality time that when you can bound and talk about things because Life goes so fast and we are busy always, but taking the time and focusing on it, it, it really and gives what? you focus, focusing on it. What kind of show are we talking about here? <laughs> First time about making some weird sounds when... Uh... <laughs> but that, what, why else we should be doing and you should be doing this? Think about it. Creativity. Just to come up with this crazy stuff, it really push your brain to the next level. And you, we're going to talk about this, the stuff that it's actually coming up. It, a lot of times kids would create this stuff. And the push-up challenge, right? The push-up challenge is coming up in 20, in 24 hours, for 24 hours, right? Builds character and confidence in you because each time you do something, something tough, like even the bike, I've never done anything like this. It really builds confidence. Yes, in adults, but in your kids. So if you have kids, think about it, how much uh, their confidence will be built and that strong armor that we talk about it, that they need to face in life. We want to prepare them for a quality life. And then the fact that the hardship comes, it's a part of life that they should understand instead of turning their back around and saying, no, I'm not going to do it. It's like really opening their eyes and going forward and charging for forward. Right now, Think about it. When you have facing a hard time, what really you, you, you're really facing? You're facing that other you. Steve would say, oh, you have double personality. I probably do have. There's more than there two is, in there. There's more than two. There's like fucking 17 or 18 in there like somewhere. I, I was this practicing out of control. right before the show. I was practicing my voice, guys, singing, and he couldn't stand this. But look, think about it. You kill the inner bitch in you because all of us have it. We talk about this all the time. Don't steal my shit. That's my shit. Kill the inner bitch. No, it's not. That's my shit. All it's, of a sudden, you're killing the inner bitch. It is. It is women and then the men. And the kids can make up their own. The men need to kill the inner bitch. The women need to kill the outer bitch. Outer bitch. <laughs> we, we just hide it, at least. The women aren't afraid to hide it. They just let the bitch banner fly. <laughs> Girls. Listen to this, but I think that's what it is. The outer bitch that is flying in the air. But you know what it is with the kids? With, <laughs> with, when it comes to them, build, like when they do stuff like this. The first part of the, of the hike, Midge was like struggling for like a mile. Until she realized like, this is fucking fun. There's a, we do also do another program, the Squire program. It's for fathers and sons. Or it could be mothers and sons. Really doesn't matter. It's, it doesn't matter as long as the son is in the teenage range of 12 to like 16. 13 to 16, somewhere around there. And it's a, a, a half-day program. It's about 14, 15 hours. Next one is in July. It's actually going to be overnight this time, overnight training, which is going to be awesome for those kids that have to train and stay up all night and do it through the night. But we do this part. on a, We do a hike. I don't want to give away too much, but whatever. We do a hike where the, the dads, I'm with the dads, with one of the other instructors that we separate from the sons at different parts of the day. We're doing a hike. There's some small hills, nothing crazy. It's like a three-mile hike. Pretty easy. The dads are holding sandbags. It's like... Two 40-pound sandbags and like two 20-pound sandbags. They have one sandbag each. The max is 40 pounds. And you should hear them when they're going up these little tiny hills that we do with hundreds of pounds sometimes carrying up those hills. They have these little bags, even the ones with the 20-pound sandbags, these grown fucking men. And they're making noises like they're about to be the first man to give birth is what it sounds like as they're walking up this hill huffing and puffing and grunting and bitching and moaning and complaining about it, right? But what they don't know is that once we get to the halfway mark, their sons are starting that same hike. So now we're on our way back, the sons are coming up the hike, and we cross paths. 
Something happens at that point. I don't want to give away too much of it. But after we cross paths, the dads actually give the bags to the sons. We have the dad. They don't know they're going to do it. They give the bags to the sons. And it's just this big, goofy sandbag. These kids are just young and open-minded and out there in the open, fucking beautiful air. Like, they're outdoors having fun. Like, oh, cool, a sandbag. They take the sandbag. They toss it on their shoulder. They're running around with it, walking like it's nothing. And they're sometimes these little, tiny, skinny, little, like, 90, 80-pound kids... And their dad, and they're carrying a bag easier than their dad with more enthusiasm, more energy, more positivity. And their dad's like, wow, this is, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I was complaining about that. Like they're just needs to flip their fucking perspective and realize that hard shit can be fun. Hard shit should be fun because realize where it's taking you. And then what we had them switch again later on the hike, they crossed paths a second time and they switched it back to the dads. All of a sudden, it wasn't that much heavier for the dads. And they were more tired. They were hungrier. They were hotter. They were out of water. And they got the bags back and they carried it much easier. After just a little switch in their head and their mindset about, wow, this could be fun. It's not really that heavy. I'm just being a little bitch and I need to kill a little inner bitch. So realize, like, it's all in your freaking head with it. And if you learn to make shit fun, make hard shit fun, what could anyone ever do to you? You're fucking unbeatable. You're impenetrable. You're fucking bulletproof. If you can volunteer to do harder shit, then people are forced to do easier shit and they can't handle it. And you're volunteering to do harder shit that people wouldn't even do if they had to. What could ever fucking bring you down when, day, when the day throws some bullshit sideways at you? It just fucking bounces off you. Like, okay, who cares? Fuck it. Fuck it. I don't give a fuck. Keep rolling. Keep moving. Uh, done. <laughs> Think about what Steve said before about Tyson. When and on that note, I, I was just thinking of this story. I'm just kidding. God. All right. No, really, I do have another story, but I'll tell you later. Yeah, yeah, he will. He loves this stuff, right? First of all, guys, thank you for making the comments. Thank you for making the comments. And uh, let's think about Tyson when he made the decision of going on a high weight. So why the what oh, on a high weight blah, 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 to talk to the him. heavyweight? No, on a high weight. It's a fucking high weight, not a heavyweight. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Stay uh, hard, look, stay strong, keep pushing. God bless. Yes, that's sir. That's another thing. He did. Isaac, Isaac is watching on. Instagram, he brought his son with him who really hasn't done much hikes and he killed the 15 mile. Like those kids finished easier than us. Isaac, what's up? Yes, guys, build decisiveness. Why you want to be decisive? Because it's uh, it's it puts you in a leadership position. It's quick instead of like thinking, oh, what if, what if? And that's how you come to life. Uh, think about it. How many times you've been asking yourself, what if it, this going to happen? What if it, this going to happen? I honestly even had those thoughts when we supposed to go on a hike, when the guys made a decision on this 15 miles hike, because I was worried about her more than she probably was worried about herself. That's what it was. Are you kidding? We were on a hike. We were on a hike yesterday in, in Las Vegas, and it wasn't that hard of a hike. It's just some rocks and some stuff. You have to climb up on some rocks in Red Rock Canyon. And we're splitting, we split off. The two kids want to go run on their own because they're having fun, right? They're jumping, parkouring, they're falling, tumbling down, getting scrapes and bruises with a fucking laugh. And so they would split off those two if there was like a split. And me and the Russian would go the other way. And then the Russian has a little rock that's like this big to get onto. And the kids just cartwheel over it. <laughs> and she acts like she can't get on it because she tries to tell her story in her, in her head. And they're gone already. And she says, help me up, help me up. I'm like, fuck no. <laughs> fuck no. You're going to figure that out on your own. And if you fall and bust your ass, we'll, we will carry you out of here. But there's no way you're just going <laughs> to automatically, before you even try, ask for help getting up a pebble. It's like a fucking pebble. <laughs> In his eyes. If you die, you die. At least you try hard. So, so she gets over it like that. Like it's nothing. Like it's fucking easy. So then later... We had another split in the road and the kids are like, no, we want to go on our own. Don't come with us. They tell her not to come with us, but she didn't want to come with me because she knows I'm going to make her do the work. <laughs> so she goes with them, says, no, I don't want to leave you alone. I want to watch you too. But I know the fucking truth. She was pretending she was there to watch them. She was there so they would help her get through the shit that they were cartwheeling over and help pull her up. Because it wouldn't be like me that says, fuck no, you're going to figure that out. You're going to get up on your own. more compassionate as you see. It's just a disservice to do something for someone you know they could do themselves. Absolutely. Which reminds me of another story. It does, seriously. Oh, hold on. This, We're, is, this, is, project instructor this is 19... Is this was 19... 1990... 1998, 1999. What? I'm at this gas station. I forget what. We just came to some party and we, we might have had it back when I used to maybe drink an adult beverage now and then. I was with like three or four of my friends. And we're... Drunk, stupid, finish a party. It's like middle of the night. 
and we run into this gas station at, at a car at a, a car, car at a gas station that my friends knew and I was whatever something happened I got in an argument with one of the guys in the car but he actually knew the friends that I was with and there were like two cars full they jumped out there was like nine seven eight nine guys and like two or three of us and we're wasted and I may or may not have had some like the tools on me and so my friend is talking to the guy in the car and I don't even remember why I'm telling this story. I forgot what made me think of it. He's talking to the guy in the car and he's like, no, just forget about it. Leave it alone. And, and the guy, they have us outnumbered and whatever. And they, they're going to, I'm just this white kid. It was a, whatever, not a white neighborhood. And they're ready just to like seven or eight of them just going to just apparently beat me up or whatever the, the thing they're going to do. And my, they're, they're saying, they're, they're talking. My friend is telling them, no, just leave it alone. Forget about it. They misunderstood why my friend was telling that. They started saying, oh, they tell me that you're lucky that, that he stopped us from doing this. My friend said to him, no, 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 you don't get it. I was saving you from him. I wasn't saving him from you. That's what he told him. Just like yesterday when she went down those rocks, she pretended she was going there to help them, but she was really looking for help from them. Like it was a different story. She tried to pretend that she was there, but we knew the truth. I don't know why I made me think of that story at the gas station, but it was pretty funny. <coughs> Yeah. And then when he said that, they were just like, that's fucking weird and there must be something off about this guy. And they just jumped in the car and left and it was over with. Anyway, <laughs> stories, right? They they come into your head like this. So another story of Ivanka when, when we were going up on a hike halfway, not even like a mile, two miles into it. She was having a hard time and the guys that were hiking with us, you guys know we split, me and Steve and her stay and Tyson was just going with them. He didn't look even for his parents. He had a mission. So we Pillar go. Saldo, Pillar Saldo, preparing myself to join the project. Did you know, Pillar Saldo, if you, when you get registered for the project that you can get set up on an installment, a payment plan, even if it's far out as, as August or November, once you get registered with a deposit, that you start your onboarding process right then. Myself and Ray Care, we run the onboarding program. We literally meet with you live on a live video Zoom training call every single week and work out with you and train you and coach you and guide you to get you mentally, physically, and emotionally prepared for your class. That's literally months and months and months of coaching and training and guidance and preparation that's included in your program once you get that deposit and you set up some kind of installment plan to lead up to your class. So if you're letting money hold you back, stop bullshitting get a deposit in because there are, there are, there's always a way to make it happen. So get it done and we'll actually help coach you and prepare you and train you literally on a daily and weekly basis to get ready for the project. Sorry for interrupting, but I just saw the message. I don't want to miss that, it. That's good. Awesome. Okay, awesome. So going back to Ivanka, right? She was having a hard time. She she really faced the, her own demons there. And, and but, but then when she accomplished this, she finished the hike and as she was showing the high fives to people and thumbs up, going down the hill, accomplishing everything. When we finish, she literally, we finish and she asked me, when are we coming back? When are we coming back there to the Iron Mountain? She asked if we could do it the next week. We all can't move our feet. My, my, one of my toes is still numb and it's like two weeks ago. Literally, I'm not even joking. One of my toes is still numb because I had brand new boots I bought the night before they weren't broken in. And she's asking if we can go back to the next week. I'm like, uh, no, I'm, I got some appointments that week. I got to sort out my sock drawer and make sure my socks match up so we can't make it. Sorry there, little kid. Fuck that, I ain't going back to that soon. But that little freak show wants to. But she wants to. And I'm sure that we're going to do this again because it, it's going to be like she, she will know what to face already, right? But, but then also comes into the point that it really built independence in kids because it looked like Tyson and Ivanka, we saw them, but they split yesterday. The last Z2, what's up? From that hike. And we saw them far away on that uh, desert with these plants coming out. But for a second, for a few minutes, we didn't see them. And then they came out. They were trying to find their own way to the truck. So it really, it's like they know that this is okay to explore and that's what we want to do it. Right now, in today's world, as we live, we really must not 10x. We may, we need to 100x. We need to create the hard stuff to feel, feel how we live. Because think about it. When everything is shut down, when everything is closed, and you really let this affect you, you're going to start living the same way. And this is awful because I see this, we see this all the time when people literally brought themselves from outside world. There is no 
extra uh, like impulses coming into you you start you stop living and we all need to continue to live a good like vibrant uh, joyful fun life and the outdoors will give you the challenges will give you this because look for the push-up challenge what do you need you just need your own self, your own will, your own decise, decision, the, 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 the ability to do it and the willingness to do it. That's it. You don't need anything. You don't need no equipment. So think about it. Now, we did plenty of big things, as I said. But when we said, when I said, like, we, we did those and we were thinking, oh, you know, something is missing. We, we do this as a family, we join other people, but it's still on a small scale. So why not to go big and make it bigger than we are? And that's when the creative mind put us into, okay, let's do a charity because then we're going to help others. That's what it is all about, the service and helping others. Look, when we talk right now, you guys getting some message here. We helping you at and some And damn, point. you can talk. Damn, I thought I talked a lot. I, look at him. I thought I talked a lot. Damn. Holy shit. Jesus. No, you are like a master of your... So yeah, we do all this weird shit anyway, so we figured why not make this for a charity. And we and just now, today's our day. We're supposed to have a day off today, rest and recover. So I say to Tyson, all right, we're going to have a day off because we're doing... Fucking 24 hours worth of push-ups tomorrow. So definitely we need our upper body to rest. Maybe we'll do some legs. Maybe we'll go for a bike ride. So what should we do? He's like, all right, let's just, I don't know, whatever. Let's just do maybe just 30 miles. I'm like, what? Fucking 30 miles? Little shit made us do 30 miles on a day off. That's his thought of a day off. More than I, I never did 30 miles until, again, in my 40s even. And his now thought of a, a recovery day is just, oh, just bang out 30 miles on the bike. Like, what a freak show. So... While we were on the, the bike ride today, we were talking about our next challenge. We already have our next few challenges planned out. And they're all always going to be fundraisers for charities. We're going to be pretty committed to the Big Brothers Big Sisters of Orange County, but also we're looking in to find a local animal shelter. So we'll either alternate months with them. We're also working on lots of other huge things. Wait till you see what we have coming up next it's in the really in the awesome. Peak Freak world. So that's coming soon. So we, we already scheduled out the next challenge, which is 24 hours on a bike. How many miles can we get within 24 hours? Again, we're going to start. It's already set the date April 3rd to April 4th. So we're actually going to finish on Easter Sunday. How fitting to finish a Sufferfest on Easter Sunday. And that's already set on the schedule for coming up. She doesn't even know that because we just figured it out right before we, we jumped on here. We came straight from the bike ride to here. So that's going to be coming up. That's they want to eat a lot. <laughs> they want me to make some Polish kielbasa. For that's them. a month. It's a month. Every month. That's April. So every month we're going to do one of these big freak family, big charity fundraiser challenges. Because we do this stuff anyway. Might as well give it to a charity and do it for a cause instead of just doing it. Yes, because think think about it. You guys, when we hear charities, when people suffer, when people that when we know that we we help someone we are more willing to do something, right? So why not to get fit? Why not to do these fun challenges and at the same time help others? So now if you know about a local charity here for the um, animal shelter, please let us know because we would like to be local here in Orange County, California. But then also maybe you know someone that also has a charity or runs a charity and need help. Why not? We are open to suggestion. So let us know, send us direct message, either to Steve or to me, and we'll be more than happy to kind of plant that in and figure this out if we can help. Why not to do this, right? So here's some of the upcoming challenges we have. So you know we have the 24 hour push-up challenge tomorrow. The link is all over Facebook, Instagram. I think it's not on my personal page that I have to put, I saw the project link up there. I have to put it up at least for this challenge, the link for the, to donate for the push-up challenge. There's already been a couple thousand dollars donated and we just put the link yesterday. So some of the other challenges we have, we have that tomorrow. The 24 hour push up challenge. April 3rd to 4th is going to be 24 hours on a bike. How many miles we get in a bike? Those two are scheduled out. Other ones we have coming up that just thoughts we keep creating this list and adding to it. I'm just going to run through it for you is riding 100 miles on a bike two days in a row. First, our goal for that 24 hour bike ride challenge next month, I think our goal is going to be to try and hit 200 miles in 24 hours. It's going to be pretty fucking hard. We're going to try to hit 200 miles in 24 hours. So, another one that we're going to do is ride 100 miles two days in a row. Another one is going to be max, maximum miles on foot in 24 hours. So literally not sleeping. It could be walking, jogging, running. We're just going to see how many miles. It could be just, of course, you stop when you need to, rest and eat, but literally up and moving 
on foot for 24 hours. That's coming up in months to come. Then we also have run a mile a day for 30 days. We have run three miles a day for 30 days. These are all just ideas we have. We're not done. We're not, we don't have these scheduled out yet and how they're going to work for fundraisers and whatever because those are 30 day challenges, not just one day. Then we also have maximum push-ups in 24 hours. So 20, or sorry, pull-ups. How many pull-ups can we do in 24 hours? That one's going to fucking suck. Then squat thrusts in 24 hours. Staying awake for 24 hours just to see how many squat thrusts we can get. Gonna fucking suck. Gonna <laughs> suck. Another one. Meditate for six hours straight. Literally sitting on the floor. Not moving. Not eating. Not sleeping. Not going to the bathroom. Nothing. Six hours straight. Meditating. I already have somebody in my head that will do that. <laughs> sitting there. Then we're going to hike Mount Whitney, which is the highest... In, I think the highest mountain in, Nor- in, in Southern California or in the country, actually in North America, I think it's the highest one. It's 14,949 feet. It starts at, at about 8,000 feet though. So you're already very thin air and hard to breathe and you're still a 6,000 foot elevation like we just did at this Iron Mountain, but it starts much higher up. So that's one of our goals. And we created this list as a family. So on our list is punch a shark. But listen, I have to quickly tell you how this coming, these ideas coming. So when we talk about previously about journaling, and writing things down and being appreciative for the day and kind of looking at your day. That's what kids doing. They, they have their own journals, very simple, and they write what they, what, how they went, how they day went and what they would like to do, the ideas that they have. And that's when they coming out with these crazy ideas, like punch a shark. Valis right? from Colombia, training for the project from Colombia. What's up international viewers? Yes, and Donna is saying thank you. Thank you so much. You are both are the best. Thank you. From Please make sure you like and share this video. Leave comments. Share it with your friends and family members and co-workers that can use some thoughts and ideas and a change and shift in their mindset just like this. Hold breath underwater for three. So we don't know the time yet. We have to figure this out. We just This is just ideas. Maybe it's going to be shorter. Maybe it's going to be longer. We don't even know where we're at to start at. So hold our breath underwater for three to five minutes. But the only problem with that, we might die. But really every one of these, we might die. You think on that highway and almost die a million fucking times driving on the highway, so we might die. But I'd rather die living than die fucking just being average and mediocre. So the if, ice he, bath if he dies, he dies. Awesome. Ice bath, lower than 32 degrees. So it's hard to get an ice bath lower than 32 degrees without freezing. So 31 degrees for 10 to 12 minutes. Again, we're fine tuning these, figuring out what exactly is the metrics gonna be, but it's somewhere around there. We want it less than 32 degrees and we want it more than 10 minutes. I know that. (coughs) And up to your neck, (coughs) arms underwater, entire body underwater, up to your neck. And at some point, maybe we're going to combine that with the underwater for three to five minutes. We're going to go underwater for a fucking minute on on the ice bath. Who knows? Let me interrupt you for a second. But this is what our family is planning to do. But think about it. If you're going to do your own ideas... Or if you want to join us on these, because those will be charities. So think about it. You will be able to join like right now for the push-up challenge. Right now, Instagram, open up three people to be joining at the same time on your screen, which you're going to, when you start watching us and you can send us a request, we can add you to the screen and we can be there together. And you can also run your own exact fundraiser. Like I have a project graduate in Boise, Idaho. That is doing the exact same fundraiser us, except his donations are going to his local chapter in Idaho, the Big Brothers, Big Sisters. And he has the local fire department and local police department coming there. They're going to have a challenge who could do more push-ups. They have vendors and all kinds of food and refreshments, all different local companies, like a whole a whole 24-hour thing. He has owns a gym and he's shutting down the entire gym for those 24 hours to run this event and to go into his local chapter. Another guy is doing it in Florida. So this you can run your same same fundraiser the same day same time that we're doing you can run it right alongside with it and we'll even help you set it up we'll actually set up all the pages for you all the funnels for you all the emails for you to help you out with this so this this is something to think about as this continues to grow and we keep doing this the next one is wrestle a bear we have to wrestle a bear i'm not sure how we're going to do that but that was the little freak show's idea i think our interpretation of wrestle a bear is going to be something like doing jujitsu for 24 hours straight that's as close as I could think of an actual challenge we could do to wrestle a bear. And maybe do jujitsu for 24 hours straight against higher level jujitsu guys than us. So we'll go to our local jujitsu place here, do a whole big fundraiser for them. That's just the thought that popped in my head right when I was riding the bike girl. That's how you come up with ideas. Yes. Shit just pops in your head. You Get a bunch of like black belts in jujitsu and just have to keep rolling with them 
Of course, you're going to stop. You're going to drink water. You're going to talk. They're going to teach you techniques. Like you could go through lessons and lessons, right? You know how much jujitsu you could learn in 24 wow. hours. I think I'm going. For it will that. be fucking awesome. Like that's my idea. We're going to do 24 hours of jujitsu. It's going to be lessons, but after each lesson, some sparring and, and resistance of just really getting your ass whooped for 24 hours. Because I'm assuming wrestling a bear wouldn't end too well. So it can't just be like me enticing grappling for 24 hours. That's just stupid. Unless like are, I'm gonna go there and get my ass whooped for 24 hours. Unless we are from the Yellowstone show, <laughs> they Yellowstone. are so nuts. All right, what's what's play video games for 24 hours? Straight. Oh, that one's gonna be a fun one. Play video games for 24 hours straight. I have to tell you guys, I Steve's been playing his video games all his life, and here and there I would pop and like play. But this year I made a commitment that I'm gonna learn and the hand and eye coordination is so hard for me but he has been teaching me and I've been doing some games because you might so think you might think oh it's you're supposed to be so active why would you do play video games for 24 hours because you know why and we do play video games not every day but a couple times a week because we earn that shit we do our reading we do our studying we do the cleaning the kids do all their work and chores around the house they read they we do our personal development we get hours of training in we get everything done and then so we can have what we call, and we have blocks of time on the calendar, literally time blocks called stupid time, where we play video games or whatever the hell we want to do. Stupid time. Where we're, where it's just stress-free. You just let loose, relax, not thinking about business, not checking your email, not checking your fucking phone, and just doing video games. So the whole purpose of that video games of 24 hours, each one of these does have some kind of lesson built in or some challenge to it, is you have to earn the right to do stuff like that. So think about it. If you know you're going to play 24 hours of video games, how hard you're going to work those few days before that, knowing you're not going to get a chance to do any work, you're not going to get a chance to do any social media, nothing. Literally, you're playing, we're going to be playing games for 24 fucking hours straight. There's times you might be changing turns, like taking turns or whatever, depending on the game. But it's telling yourself you have to earn the right to, to get those rewards like that and to have that stupid time. Tell me one thing, who came up with this? You or Tyson? I don't remember. Either me. I think I did, actually. Maybe he did. I don't remember. I think we should leave some of them unspoken maybe here maybe we're gonna give you one more last one like well the other ones are like a bear crawl for a mile that one you could stand up you have to because a mile is a long time to bear crawl if you're actually doing it but then also bear crawl for a quarter mile without a break jumping rope for a mile then also more survival stuff like five days in the backyard with survival we also are planning a project day and then the big one is Bench press a whale. And we're not going to tell you how we're going to do it, but we are actually going to do a bench press a whale. We are going to so bench stay. press a motherfucking whale. Stay All right, tuned. so we need to wrap this up. So the, this charity tomorrow is for the 24 hours of the push-ups. Donate at the links. I'll put the link in the comments below of this video. And it's also all over Facebook. The Big Brothers Big Sisters is all about being a mentor to, to kids who maybe don't have that mentor. It, it, and from their own words, it's together we ignite potential. Because in a world of causes, they say we make a difference by creating professionally supported one-on-one -on -one matches for youth who want to realize their full potential. And that's why we're donating to it. It's such a big cause, a big, huge Part of what we do, our purpose is to be role models that people want to emulate about the way they are with their kids. So what better foundation and to do than the Big Brothers? And they say through mentoring, they aim to decrease the number of disconnected youth in Orange County, Riverside County, and San Bernardino counties here in California because empowered youth have the potential to change the fucking world. And that's in their actual statement. They said empowered youth have the a potential to change the fucking world. Look on their website. It's there, I promise, sort of. The Big Brothers and Sisters delivers one-on-one -on -one mentoring to youth faced, facing adversity through, the, through these programs that they have by matching up sponsors with the kids. They provide the training, the resources, and the support necessary for each match to succeed and build a relationship. And again, tomorrow is the push-up for charity for the Big Brothers Big Sisters. It's from Saturday, March 6th, 12 noon, all the way to Sunday, March 7th, 12 noon. 24 hours straight. How many can you do in 24 hours, sucker? Are you going to join us? Are you going to stay up for 24 hours and do it right alongside with us? Donate to it because we will be staying awake for 24 hours to see how many push-ups we can actually do. You can click the link to donate. You can participate. You can run your own fundraiser right alongside us like those guys in Idaho and Florida are doing. Or you can just do it right alongside us. We'll put you on the screen for a little while. We'll do the push-ups with us. We will kick ass together and we will do it for a great cause. So that's going to wrap up this episode of The Russian and the Freak. And let me tell you, if you need help with any of this stuff, with doing hard shit, with having the right mentality to do hard shit, to deal with suffering, or just in discipline, in your energy, in your confidence, in taking action, in being your freak self, if you need help with that, we do one-on-one -on -one private coaching. It's called Operate to Dominate, OTD, Operate to Dominate in your mind, your body, and your business. 
so you can have more discipline, have more energy, have more fulfillment in your life, and eventually using all those tools to make some more money and be more successful so you can do things like these charity fundraisers we're talking about. And if you're a man who would like to go into your own suffering and see what it's like to have to endure these things to become an even better man, an even better husband, an even better father, leader, entrepreneur, and just better human, the project is a voluntary suffering. Rather than you just continuing to suffer in silence as a man, go through some voluntary suffering so we can have a breakdown to break through going from bitch to beast. This is episode number four of The Russian and the Freak. We will talk to you later. You are fucking awesome. awesome. No excuses. No excuses.